Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today is day four of us not having power. Um, we had a huge ice storm in Quebec um, and I'm in Montreal and it's been day four, no power. Um, but we managed to survive. So I wanted to make a video on how we survived for four days. And uh, it's all thanks to first the switch I made uh, to the Ionic 5. So I made a video, guys, on me switching from the BZ4X to uh, the Ionic 5 just one day before the storm. I didn't switch it for the storm. It just happens to be that the timing was perfect. Um, so I'll put a video on why I switched. Um, and second, thanks to uh, Electron for sponsoring this video. The, I, I contacted them initially to uh, try their uh, V2L adapter and it happens to be, you know, to be sent on, I think I got it the day after the storm. So I'm currently running the Electron V2L adapter and powering my house, guys. So the timing was perfect for the purchase of the car and for the adapter getting home. Uh, so I've been pretty much powering all the essentials. Um, my gas furnace, uh, which doesn't take that much electricity, my fridge, my freezer, um, and uh, the internet modem, the lights, name it. So um, you do have to be careful as there's a limitation for, uh, for these uh, adapters. I believe it's 1,800 watts. But once you know what you're doing and you properly do the connections, it's a safe way to pretty much run a generator, an electric generator inside your garage with no fumes and doing it in a very safe way. So that's, uh, that's amazing. So just a disclaimer, guys, don't do this, don't do this at home, whatever I'm going to show you guys. Uh, you have to use the right gauge, uh, the, the right extensions, the right power bars. Not all the power bars are the same um, quality as well. You'll have some substandard ones. So once you know what kind of power you'll be pulling and what kind of gauge extension you'll need, then the setup is safe. Um, I will do a permanent setup eventually uh, where I'll have um, a transfer switch where I'll be choosing which uh, line I want to power up. So I want to plug in the car directly to the grid. Well, not the grid, but my house, um, essentially, without running all these extension wires. But you have to be careful with these. So a big disclaimer, guys, don't do this at home. Just run the V2 adapter with one extension and power up your electronics. If you want to do a little further, I suggest you go see a, um, an electrician who can hook up a transfer switch. And at least that's what's legal in Canada and in Quebec, where I live. Uh, the transfer switch is needed to cut the neutral wire between um, your, your panel and um, when you're going to plug in the car. So yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys my setup and before showing you the setup, I'll show you the adapter too. And uh, once again, I wanna thank Electron to sponsoring this video and sending me the adapter in a timely manner where I survived for four days, guys, and especially with the eight month old baby at home, we were able to stay warm, uh, keep her food uh, you know, frozen and actually use it, use the microwave as well. So this was a big lifesaver uh, for the past uh, four days. And, ma and we managed to not waste food as well and not throw away food. And we kept it in the cold in the fridge. So uh, yeah, so let's get to the, to the setup. So before showing you guys my setup, I just wanna uh, show you the uh, adapter that Electron sent me. Once again, thank you Electron, you saved my life for these uh, four days. Uh, so this type, this connection is the J1772, the same thing you would use for your uh, level one and level two AC charging. Um, and also with the CCS1 combo, which adds the DC at the bottom, but this is the J1772. And so you have the locking mechanism. And the other, other side, you have the 515 NMA uh, connection here, which is rated for 15 amperes and 125 volt here, uh, which is the max, which is usually one, uh, one circuit, one line. And how I want you to use this, it's pretty much come to your car. And once this is open, um, you want to connect this within 60 seconds and your car doesn't need to be turned on. Open this port, connect this and within 60 seconds, um, you should start um, using this. So open this, connect this, and then afterwards you plug uh, any type of plug here or uh, electronic here and it'll start doing the V2L transfer. So let me show you guys. 
So I'm trying to do this one hand. Let me try to open this. There you go. It's open. So let's say I just want to plug this here. It's very hard with one hand. Hold on. Let me just use my other hand here. Was it plugged in? There you go. Sorry. Now it's plugged in. So now you don't see anything. It's not flashing. You need to plug something here so you can start using it. So let me try to plug something here. So you have a battery charger here with a plug here and you will see this will start flashing the moment I plug this. So let me try to film this here. And once I plug in, there you go. It locked. It's going to start blinking and you'll hear some uh, humming noises and then you'll see this is on and you will also see this on the dash so if you go in the front you'll see that v2l is transferring and usually when the power is significant enough it'll show you how much it is so to unplug this do not unplug this because it is locked. So you, what you want to do is you want to do the opposite. So the reverse. So unplug this. The vehicle will unlock the locking mechanism here. And it will be much easier to take it out. There you go. So the V12 is plugged in. Uh, as I mentioned, guys, um, huge uh, ice storm here in Quebec. So this is a big lifesaver. Uh, and here's my setup with the Electron V2L, uh, which is plugged in. Uh, when I first plugged in, my battery was at 74%. I think we went overnight and we, I think we spent 5%. I'm, I was at 69% this morning. So the setup is plugged in to the charging port. I have an extension cable here, actually a power bar, which splits the power in three. So the first one goes upstairs and two of them goes downstairs. And I'll show you guys where it's going. Really important guys, the maximum here is 15 amperes uh, at the 1,800 watts. So once you respect that, you should be fine even if you're using power bars. So you go down here and I'll show you guys the setup downstairs. So the wires come from the garage there all the way down here. So we have two going downstairs here. One is plugged into my freezer here. So I don't want the food to go to a waste. So, and we also have uh, milk for the baby. So having an eight month old baby, it's really important to keep the food fresh. So I got the freezer going. Uh, this is something that's, I wouldn't say it's completely legit, but at least I know what I'm doing here. Uh, I have a gas furnace here, so it doesn't take that much electricity. It just needs uh, the fan to actually work and the electronic components for the thermostat. So what I did is I just plugged in uh, an extension to the connection, electric connection here, and I plugged in, plugged in the extension here. This is a temporary connection, guys, but it does work. I've been having heating the whole night um, since it's a gas furnace, and it barely takes, I think, 200 watts not even 200 watts. I mean, that's very efficient for me. And that means I can run on V2L for days um, if I'm just running the uh, the heating. So those are the two uh, ones that are coming here. I'll show you guys the top one. So this is the upstairs one that's going in. This is a much major setup, guys. There's a fridge here, which barely takes a few watts. So that's working. And we have the microwave and some ch charging stations here. We're doing roughly with the microwave 1,500 watts. So whenever we're using the microwave, we kind of adjust uh, what we want to plug in. So to check how much you're using power, it's very easy. You can just simply open the door and on your dash, you'll be able to see that you're transferring V2L and you're consuming 0 0.2, as you can see in my case, uh, kilowatts. This can go up to 1.8. Sometimes it peaks at 1.9, but you don't want to go there. The max is 1.8, so try to stay well under that. And my battery, I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, probably not, it's at 61%. Um, it's really not, depending on what you plugged in, um, doesn't consume that much. So the higher power usage, you know, the, uh, the faster your battery will drain. But this, it's been four days, guys. Uh, yes, I did go out once and recharged it, but even if I didn't recharge it, I will still have plenty of power because I'm losing around 10%, 15% a day 
uh, depending on what I'm using. And the good thing about this is the fact that your car doesn't need to be turned on. Um, I've tested other cars where you know you plug in your inverter and then the inverter is plugged into the 12 volt battery. This is straight from your traction battery and literally it just comes out and your car can be locked. It doesn't need to run, it doesn't need to be turned on. It takes from the traction battery and just feeds whatever you need to feed. So that's the good thing about the, the system here for the V2L. My next step is, because this is since this is, was temporary and this wasn't planned at all, but at least um, it helped me through the ice storm here and the power outage. My next step would be plugging this to the grid. Well, not the grid, well, internal grid, which is uh, for home. So what I want to do is take power from here and plug it here so I, at least I can have some stuff running in the house without running all these extension cables, right? Uh, and a safe way to do this is having a transfer switch. So in Canada, especially in Quebec, we need to have a transfer switch in order to safely cut the neutral wire, uh, the neutral power going back feeding to the, the main line with the, where hydro needs to work when the power is cut. Uh, so what you have to do is install a transfer switch here, choose what are the essential uh, line that you want, and once you choose that, you just run the wires, well, not you, electrician, certified electrician needs to do this, and once you have the transfer switch, what you do is, you run an extension here from here to here. Usually it's a 30 amper or a 50 amper extension uh, cord that you do, um, depending on what kind of connector. Sometimes I, I believe you can use the 1450 or uh, for the 30 amper, I, I forgot which one it was, but use, use that. And from here to here, and then afterwards, once the power is out, you just usually, it cuts off the main usually, so it doesn't backfeed, and you run w all these stuff that you need Accordingly to, accordingly to the wattage of what the, the vehicle can uh, give you, which is 1,800 um, watts this time. So this can go on for days. And the good thing about having a transfer switch is if you also want to use a gas generator or gas, I mean, um, any kind of generator you want to use, you'll also be able to do it. But I have an electric car that can provide electricity for days uh, for my needs. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so that would be my next, uh, next setup. That's it folks, hope you liked the video. Like I mentioned, this is a temporary setup. I will be doing a more permanent uh, setup with the transfer switch. Um, I want you to know the opinion if you're already using the V2L. I know there's the OEM one, but I got sponsored by uh, Electron for this one here, which works amazingly well. Um, do you have any suggestions of other videos um, and uh, any comments about my switch from the BZ4X to the Ionic 5 as well? I'll be interested to know guys. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.